Hi traders, welcome to this live webinar with FXDD. My name is Chris Forsick from Elite Currency. And this is a live trading webinar where we're going to take a look at the, the financial markets, charts, technical analysis, some wave patterns, chart patterns, price action. Uh, that's, of course, going to be our main focus. There was a lot of uh, news events that are just behind us. Uh, the FOMC interest rate decision in the US and in the UK. Uh, for the pound so uh, a lot of things to digest let's take a look first of all what the markets are doing just after this risk disclaimer though explaining the fact that trading is considered high risk and may not be suitable for everyone please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that and this webinar and videos for informational and educational purposes only if you're in the live webinar please uh, take a look at the youtube channel of fxdd and subscribe to to uh, see all the videos and uh, webinars that are uploaded and if you're looking at the video, feel free to check out these two links so you can join the live webinars as well. All right, so let me close this and let me pull up the live uh, charts. There we go. Uh, I have to find it quickly. That's about it. All right, so you should soon be seeing the euro dollar. There we go. Now, uh, maybe, yeah, basically, first of all, the dollar then very quickly before we look at the technical. So the FOC was as expected, nothing really shocking there. Uh, interest rate got cut by a quarter, still waiting for the long term perspectives. So, yeah, basically, euro fell a little bit and moved up a little bit. Nothing, nothing shocking there. Pound also uh, interest rate is the same. So. I'm waiting for Brexit news. And uh, so really, really nothing really substantial changed from that point of view. So let's take a look at the technicals. That was the quick summary there. Uh, so, well, technically speaking, uh, price is right at the previous resistance and could still be at a, a kind of a resistance spot. Uh, it has to break through this support trend line of the triangle for, for a downside break. It will have to break through 110.75 for some upside potential. Not a big fan of the euro dollar at this moment. Uh, I, I was expecting this ABC, but you know, this price action, I'm not a big fan of really going sideways, quite choppy. I was a bearish here, managed to exit at some smaller loss uh, around the weekly pivot point upon the pullback basically, and, and then move up again. Uh, it could still be a bouncing spot with a head and shoulders like this, by the way, but for me to trade it, I would need to see price break below this uh, 110, the support trend line, uh, probably uh, before thinking about uh, a trade down to the to the previous double bottom here at 109.25. So a break like that could be good for continuation uh, towards that uh, that support level. If it breaks below 109.25, which is certainly possible because the trend is still down, look at that. It is right at the resistance trend line and uh, still at that, still hasn't broken that. So it could easily be uh, a uh, downtrend continuation. So then if price does break through this double bottom, uh, 108.50, 108.07.50 would be the next targets to think about. If if it does if it does break above 107, 110.75, excuse me, then I move up to uh, 111.25 for the moment. Uh, 111.50 or 111.75, I think the most likely candidates for a uh, a move up. So price could move up, but a lot of resistance, thick resistance ahead, and I think that price could bounce in these spots for a bearish reversal if it moves up and that's yeah it looked it looked bullish today but now it's moving lower so all in all it is basically in, in this wedge and looking for a breakout very simple i would not have anything against looking for shorts here uh personally i wouldn't even mind a pending order at 111.80 with a stop loss at 112.70 uh 112.80 and uh aiming for a 108 or so if it gets up to there Otherwise, the breakout for the downside is the next best thing. Upside, maybe, but only intraday trading. If tomorrow breaks out to the upside and there's a flag on the 15 like this, maybe a continuation higher, but very small kind of scalping trade. Pound dollar uh, looked bearish to me yesterday, but although price moved a little bit lower, not as much as I thought it could, then price went sideways, so that's looking a little bit more bullish now. That said, you know, it is still in this rising wedge. There is divergence between these tops. If it does move up, 
125.50, I think is the max. And it can happen because rising wedges are difficult chart patterns. So sometimes there's still that last push within the rising wedge, the last kind of uh, part of the uh, trend continuation, last gasp of a trend continuation before, uh, before it then indeed reverses. That could happen with the pound too. It dashes up, hits 125.50. The last push within the uptrend and then starts flying down or moving down as part of that bigger reversal that I'm expecting for the moment or retracement on the pound dollar at least. So that is possible that it could move up as part of that the last push. If it breaks above this trend line on 125, we can see a small push up. Uh, if it fails and price starts to break below 124.35 here, uh, 40, then more likely to see a bigger correction, I think, uh, on this pound dollar. I wouldn't trade the break, but I would wait for the bounce at 124, wait for a uh, rejection at 124.50, and, and move down to the 38.2 fib at 123. All right, that's the playing field, in my view, on the pound dollar for the moment. Uh, pound was a great trades we had in here for the upside uh, earlier this week. Uh, first of all, the fib bounce here and then the trend line break. Both of them worked out very nicely and hit the target at 125. Uh, well, actually, I exited market exit at 125, 20-ish, right a few pips below that top. That was great. Now, consolidation, intraday scalp trade to the upside above 125 up to 125.50. Not that interesting to me, but for those that like five-minute charts, small trade there, maybe for 50 pips, one last dash. Otherwise, uh, I think personally, uh, if it does break below 124.40, uh, I would look for 125.50, hit at 124, pullback and continuation. Dollar yen and 125.50, I would assume uh, is a target level that could create a rejection and a move down, by the way. I think I mentioned that already. All right, doesn't matter. Dollar yen uh, is bullish to me and looks like it's making some type of ABC pattern. I think if it gets into 107.50, 107.60, it would still be good uh, to uh, look for a bounce in that zone, previous tops, previous bottoms, or 107.10 here uh, with these highs and lows uh, right here and the, the long term moving average. Both are potential support zones, both are potential uh, bounce spots and trend continuation spots. And on the dollar yen, I think that uh, as long as price stays below 108.20, this could be a pullback, one more downside to the to support, which could be a bouncing spot better back up. If it does break above 108.20, it depends on how, you know, the price action, how bullish the price action is, because it needs to show strong bullish price action. Otherwise, it could also be a head and shoulders. So got to be careful of that. But if it does break up with strong price action above 108.20, it could be an immediate breakout as well. It's a little bit more difficult to trade. So it really depends on, on the price action that, that is there. Pound yen, uh, yeah, remains bullish. It's definitely an uptrend above 21 EMA, um, you know, the price looked a little bit deflated here uh, with what looks like kind of a rising wedge a little bit and a break below that rising wedge. So don't like it as yet. I think it has to move deeper. I think the pound yen has to go maybe down uh, to 134 first and 133.75. That could be a good spot for uptrend continuation because I do think that for the moment, it looks more like uh, some type of correction rather than than a downtrend, but uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think yet. Doesn't look like this bearish correction is over yet. I think it could be better to to wait for one more lower low and then a bounce uh, after that. Uh, Euro yen could be a triangle, uh, and and could be in some type of A B C. This could be D. So down for E. Some bounce at one ninety one nineteen twenty ish. Could be interesting for uh, for an end of that triangle and a break of this trend line could confirm uh, the continuation uh, higher. So that uh, could be interesting too uh, later on. Uh, Euro pound, that's old fib. Sorry about that. That uh, looks bearish, but sideways. So not that interesting to me. Dollar Swiss franc. Oof. Strong bounce at the previous tops. Now a, a exact bounce at the weekly pivot point here. Yeah, no, not that interesting. I'll tell you which one might be interesting uh, to me. 
that uh, could be the Australian dollar, actually. We'll dive into that very soon. Uh, here is uh, dollar cad doesn't look that interesting. There is a couple of, a cup and handle as Nenad saw. This is the this is the let's say this is the uh, the cup. This is the hand bill right here. Uh, that is a bullish pattern usually. So let's see. Yeah, price action a little bit slow and choppy at this moment, at least. A breakout here could be interesting, though, because of that, that particular pattern. I'm not a big fan of the dollar cat, so I'll probably just to move on. Uh, not a big fan of the New Zealand dollar at this moment either. It is at potential support at the 78.6 fib when we put it from here to here. But the New Zealand is looking a little bit weak at the moment, and I'm not sure if it's going to bounce at the 78.6 fib. Uh, Australian dollar uh, bounce at support here. Uh, but I'm not sure it's quite strong momentum as well. So the obvious lead does not look that interesting to me. It might make a little bit of a bounce up into the zone, not enough for me to really trade it. Uh, there are other pairs I like though. I'll show you in a second. Uh, Euro odd, strong upside, strong momentum. We need to wait for a pattern, either a bull, bear flag, sorry, bull flag for continuation or uh, either some strong downside to indicate a reversal. I did like the Euro New Zealand though, this continuation candle right here. Uh, so there we go. Uh, that was a momentum candle within a uh, strong MACD momentum. It's a specific strategy from mine that I use for uh, momentum continuations uh, above the 21 email like that. And uh, worked out, it's doing okay. It was up 50 pips, now a small retracement. Let me check uh, where I would move it to break even. Uh, let's see, not yet, or well, not break even, but where I would trill stop the, these fractals here. So I would put the stop loss at around 174.04. Uh, and yeah, I can do that right now, actually. So I took a setup here that's already open. If the price still dips in the zone, I think it's still valid from my point of view. There is a risk, of course, because of these tops, but I think one more push up to 70, 176, or close to it as possible. That's the uh, next target. The target after that is 178.50. I'm aiming for 178.50 because of the, I'm trying to catch a bigger win, but the next target is really 176. So my entry was around 174.90-ish. And original stop loss was about 173.50-ish. Uh, uh, All right, other than that, I was, I think that the, Australian dollar yen could be interesting. It looks like ABC completed. It looks like a, a bounce at the 144 MA. Uh, so I'm wondering if that could not be an ABC completed for wave four and a new uptrend on this Australian dollar yen. Then today we're looking at this and uh, thinking that that could be maybe a good kind of uh, bouncing spot. Uh, trend is up with the price. You know, 20 May is still above the 144. The 144, very typical for a bouncing spot. So from that point of view, it makes sense. Now it is hitting local resistance and it was very strong momentum here. So what I would probably like to see is a break uh, above the 50 fib like this, break pullback continuation or just the break itself on this Australian dollar yen. Or if it moves down and there's weakness for this there's a big pin bar. Let's say it moves down and uh, there it ends up with a, with a pin bar like that at double bottom. That too could be a price action signal indicating a, a bounce, a double bottom and a reversal. Bitcoin moving lower, breaking below 10,000. And that doesn't surprise me necessarily. This was a triangle, A, B, C, D, uh, E. Now, if it is a triangle, it shouldn't break below 92. If it breaks below that, then it's then it's... Could still be a triangle, but not a bullish triangle. Then it's maybe some bearish triangle or uh, a descending wedge, and it could fall down to seven and a half thousand in my view, which could be a bouncing spot. And uh, I also wanted to take a look at the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar.
that too, just like the odd yen could be a bouncing spot. Hitting local resistance. So either it breaks, pull back and continue, or it makes a little pull back, pin bar at the double bottom to make a triple bottom. And that could also be a price action signal. It's quite similar to the odd yen, uh, this odd New Zealand. Let me take a look at the New Zealand yen to see which one might be better, odd yen or uh, odd New Zealand. And at this moment, whew, it's really a tie. <laughs> yeah, that's a close call. Uh, very close call at this moment. Which one is stronger? It, it looks like, uh, or which one is weaker, maybe better said. Um, I think, um, yeah, that's a tough one, but leaning maybe towards Yen being a little bit weaker. So, but that's a tough one. So yeah, both maybe odd, odd yen looking a little bit better, but really, really close. I'm not sure. Uh, gold, strong momentum here. This could be wave A. This looks like all part of wave B with a, a descending wedge taking place. That pattern, excuse me, typically breaks south. Uh, it's bearish breakout and typically would go down to the minus 272 target. I think at 1450, I think is a great zone. Uh, I have a pending order at uh, 1450 on a different account uh, for a long uh, and, and a stop loss. I don't know exactly. Let me check. I think just uh, below the, the minus 61.8 target probably. So 1429, I believe. Uh, there are also a lot of tops in here. So I wouldn't expect price. I hope that price doesn't break below that. Uh, so, yeah, what I'm expecting is ABC uh, complete the correction and then bounce back up because ultimately this is a strong uptrend, of course. So uh, if it makes a pullback like that, I hope that buyers step in around 1454, uh, a uptrend continuation. Now, the stock indices look bullish. Dow Jones is fighting to make a new high. 27,400 is the all-time high uh, with this uh, flag after an uptrend, I think it could challenge that and maybe break for a new high. Once it breaks for a new high, I don't know, it could be volatile. Every time it broke for a new high, the last two years, uh, there was a substantial retracement. Uh, take a look at uh, this here and here. And it was a substantial correction. And here, a challenge of the previous high also. Uh, but uh, yeah, so let's see if that happens again, this pattern, probably, I don't know. It's, difficult to say it is uh in this uptrend channel for the moment so but at this moment you know a, a continuation up to uh and above 27,400 seems likely at this point dax2 by the way uh let me see uh, where dax is i don't see it on my chart at the moment i'll open it There we go. So on DAX, it looks to me uh, like five waves up here, ABC down, one, two, three. This looks like a four of a lower degree action, not even on the daily. Uh, here, one, two, three, and uh, within the three, it looks like this was a four. Looks like it's going up for five, all within uh, this zigzag. So more upside, I think, more continuation for the moment likely. Uh, to retest the previous tops, I, I do believe here. There we go. Alrighty, let's see how price responds to, to those resistance levels. So for the moment, I think uh, Australian dollar uh, could find rebounds against Australian dollar yen and Australian dollar New Zealand, Euro New Zealand, uh, waiting for follow through to the upside dollar yen. I'm looking for a bounce at 107.50 for uptrend continuation. Euro dollar and pound dollar, I'm not sure. It really depends on the breakout direction at this moment. Euro yen, it looks like a triangle. Pound yen, maybe a bounce at 133.75, 134. Um, New Zealand, Australian dollar, I'm really not so sure at this moment. Rather sit on the sidelines. 
Same with pound out, pound New Zealand. I did trade the pound New Zealand and the pound out to the upside, but managed to squeeze some nice pips on that. Uh, two of them in the one 100 area and one 370, 370 pips. Now, I don't know. It could be a continuation, certainly possible, but I need to see some retracement and continuation for, for those uptrends to, to have some, some, space, <clears throat> some space again. And I don't see that right now at this moment. Um, and yeah, don't have a setup personally at, at, at this spot, strong uptrends, but very close to resistance. I, I don't know. It looks like, uh, it could still make one more higher high, but need a pullback first of all. So I don't have anything on those, uh, no questions. I see that's good. So everything's clear. Yeah, it was a bit fast, but I think that really kind of wraps up my thoughts for the moment. Uh, and uh, that kind of summarizes everything. Uh, once again, if uh, if the euro dollar goes up, I think it could be interesting shorting area. <clears throat> Same for the pound dollar, because ultimately, euro dollar is still in the downtrend. Pound dollar too, for that matter. So if it does go up higher, I think that those could be good bouncing spots. Here you can see uh, twenty one still below the one forty three May. So ultimately, still in the downtrend on uh, on this pound dollar. So. I think still some type of a bounce is likely uh, to take place if it gets high enough. And I think that's also for the euro dollar. So, um, so therefore, I think if it does move up more prone to, to look for shorts, then uh, maybe there'll be some small longs on both, but ultimately running into resistance in my view. And I would expect dollar strength. Same for the dollar yen. So I'm a little bit of a dollar bull at this moment. Maybe not right now. But uh, soon, uh, I think, after either one more uh, dollar bear move or, or otherwise uh, with a dollar breakout. So that's with the, the dollar yen as well, valid. Um, you know, difficult to say if this is really, at the moment, if this is really a one, two, three or an ABC. I think that still remains to be seen. I'm leaning towards a one, two, three because this has moved up so much at this moment that it looks more like a wave three to me. But that still remain. That's still not 100% confirmed, though, uh, because there's still a lot of resistance in here. So if price is able to break above those levels, then I think there's a more fair chance that price uh, could make a, uh, a uptrend continuation, like I think it could now. But it's still a little bit on the early side for that. All right. Uh, regarding other trends. Yeah, euro pound. I still think that yeah, euro is a great uptrend. I mean, the, the pound has really uh, moved down quite sturdily, uh, moved up quite sturdily against the euro as well. Actually, after euro really uh, made a move, very good move up. Let's get rid of all this one second. Uh, so it's a little bit of a, a, a fast up, fast down, and therefore it is down, maybe not necessarily a pullback, but I am still leaning towards the fact that it is a pullback. So I think if price is able to break uh, above, uh, let's see what kind of levels could be key. Yeah, so break above 90.25, basically, could send us in an uptrend finally. So it will take a while. Uh, we'd need price to, to show momentum here. Uh, sorry, wrong color. Uh, momentum here. And uh, a flag and then an acceleration higher. I, I, think, I still think it will be likely to happen at what point. Let's put a flip from this bottom to this top. Price didn't quite make it to the, oh, I did hit the 61.8 fib actually at 88. That could be it. So keeping an eye on this weekly, ca daily candle for maybe a first kind of uh, 
reversal indication if it closes bullish. This weekly candle, if it's a doji or not, could be good info. And uh, maybe a head and shoulders here. It's an early uh, kind of pattern, but just maybe uh, it, it could be starting this uh, this move back up. I'm still leaning towards the fact that, that the euro might make a, a continuation of this uptrend as it had before that. All right, with divergence between these bottoms, uh, maybe another factor why that could happen. And, and also it looks like an ABC. But anyhow, I would be uh, waiting for confirmation of this break. I want to see a breakout here. Otherwise, I would not... Uh, I wouldn't trade. I'm not a big fan of the euro pound anyhow. So yeah, I'm always more cautious on those pairs. So those are all of my, uh, my thoughts uh, and uh, the trading ideas that I have in mind for, uh, for this week, next week. Nenet and I are going to be back with the live webinars. Nenet on Tuesday, I believe, I think I have one on Thursday again, but let me double check. Should be Thursday indeed, Thursday, Thursday at GMT time morning this time around. So uh, looking forward to an education webinar next week, though. Looking forward to seeing you there and then. Wish you good trading. Check out FXDD YouTube channel once again uh, for, uh, for more updates. And uh, see you all very soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.